Well, what we have here is a Benjamin 3620 uh, CO2 powered um, 85 shot 22 caliber lead ball air rifle. And uh, this came uh, from my neighbor. He got it at an estate. And I have a wonderful neighbor. He knows I'm into air guns and he knows everybody in town. And so when he sees something like this, he'll latch on to it and bring it over to me. So uh, that's where it came from. These were made uh, like 1959 through 1964, according to the Blue Book of Air Guns. And I have to think this wasn't shot much because the stock is, is almost perfect. I mean, it's got a few marks on it here but it's just in beautiful shape. Uh, the metal looks to me like it was just starting to get some surface rust. So um, uh, it's a good thing we got it because it's probably been sitting out in a shed or something. And uh, a few more years and the uh, surface rust or spotting may have taken hold here. But as it is, there's no pitting and the black actually looks pretty good. The only thing that I can see that's a, an issue is the screws here that hold the end cap in are buggered up. There's one, this screw here, and also the screw that holds the end of the magazine here is kind of buggered up. But other than that, it uh, looks like it's in really good shape. Now, when I got this, I put a powerlet in it, and by the way, it takes these... Uh, 8 gram powerlets, not the 12 like uh, Crossman. And I think back in the 1950s, probably these 8 gram were more readily available, and that's why Benjamin went with them. Uh, they used them on seltzer bottles and stuff, so every bar had these uh, and restaurant. But I put a powerlet in here, and lo and behold, the thing held. Um, and so I was very happy about that because I didn't think I was going to have to do anything to it. But I shot it a little bit, just kind of cycling it through. And after that first powerlet, the second one I put in leaked out the back here. So there was some valve issues. And so, long story short, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to rebuild this. Kind of add to the body and knowledge, I guess, of uh, air gun repair and because uh, there are some unusual features here and uh, some special tools that you need to rebuild these. Now this one takes uh, 22 caliber lead balls and I actually didn't have any. I went online shopping for some and uh, I couldn't find any. My normal sources, you know, Pyramid Air and some of the other air gun shops uh, didn't have any lead balls. So I put an ad up on the Air Gun Warriors form, and I'll put a link to that form in the uh, description here, uh, that I needed some 22 caliber lead balls. And Scott up in Wisconsin, he posts over there as uh, SM Cowboy. He came through and uh, helped me out on this. So I did get one box that I can at least shoot through here. Um, so let's take a look here at some of the features on the gun. Well, first of all, we have the loading port up here in the front, this hole right here, and your lead balls go in there, and then you shake them down into the tube, and the cover keeps them from falling back out. Here's the lettering. I think you can see that, the 85 shot uh, Benjamin 22 carbine made in USA and it actually has a serial number a 01082 but that serial serial number has no meaning I can't figure out what that's supposed to to mean and of course on the back there's the designation of the uh, 3620 Benjamin air rifle St. Louis Missouri so to put the power lid in you would unscrew this piece here, and it's got gas in it, so I'm not going to unscrew it right now, but then put the power lid in, and then put the this uh, end piece back on, 
and when you take your first shot, there's a piercing pin in here. We'll see that later uh, when we take it apart, but that pin pierces the end of the uh, powerlet, and that fills this chamber with CO2, and then after the first shot, you actually get uh, CO2 to propel the, the uh, lead ball. The first shot doesn't do anything other than pierce, or the first time you fire it, rather. It uh, doesn't do anything but pierce the power lid. Okay, before we get into it too much, we have three tools here that I wanted to uh, show. Uh, the first one uh, is this pair of pliers here, and this is a special pair that was, I think, made by Benjamin. And uh, they have the long neck, so you can reach in there and grab a snap ring that's in here holding all the valve parts in and you can grab it and pull it out. And I've got uh, a picture of this and some dimensions and drawings that I'll include at the end of the, uh, the video here in case somebody wanted to try and make them. The only thing I would suggest if you did try and make these is harden the tips because uh, we did make some and had no way to heat treat them. And they did reach in and they grabbed this O-ring, but when you compressed it, the tips would bend and so they didn't work. It needs to be heat treated. So these are uh, kind of a must-have. If you don't have one of these, it's possible uh, to go down in there with uh, a pointed uh, rod of some kind and uh, pry one side of the uh, snap ring out and kind of work it around until you get it uh, loosened out of its slot and then uh, get a hook tool and pull it out, but this makes it uh, easier. Okay, our second tool, and uh, this was suggested by UJ uh, Backus at the uh, Gateway to Air Guns forum. Uh, he posts over there as a 20 cal, I think, and um, it's just a piece of three quarter inch aluminum uh, rod, and we've cut or filed teeth on here, two of them. You can see, I think, there's two teeth. And the purpose of this tool is there's a O-ring down in, in the valve. It sits on top of the valve. It just sits there. And it's been in there for probably 60 years, and they're hard to get out. You can't get underneath them. They're brittle. They're hard. And so you basically, you've got to gouge them out. And so this tool is intended to go down there, put a little pressure on it, and turn it and uh, hopefully that'll uh, take enough material and eventually that o-ring will give up. So that's a good tool to have uh, for getting that out. The other way I've heard, I haven't tried it, is to use acetone and just soak that uh, o-ring in acetone, but I, you know, I didn't try that. This worked for me. Our last tool is a pushing tool, I guess you'd call it. It's a six inch bolt uh, and then you take an old powerlet, cut the end off, cut off the uh, neck here, shorten the neck, so it's just big enough to fit, I think this is a quarter or 20, um, and you've got a washer and a um, nut here, and on the inside you have a nut. So uh, what this is used for is when you put the new O-ring into the tube, you can use this to push it down and seat it right up against the face of the valve. And also when you put the snap ring back in, uh, once you get it started past the threads in here, you can push it with this and you'll hear it snap into its slot down here. And that means you've got everything uh, in place. So these are the three tools, They're very handy. I put a new power lid in and it all leaked and so I took that one out. I put a new o-ring here at this end and put a new power lid in and it's leaking out this end which means we got some valve issues here to deal with. So let's go ahead and we'll pull this fellow apart. Stop comes off, trigger comes off. Okay, triggers off, take off the end cap here. 
somebody's been uh, torquing on these screws on the end cap because they, they show a little bit of wear on them, a little bit of pressure. Keep that from springing out of there. And the end cap comes out, hammer spring, and the hammer, and the bolt comes out like that. All right, let's see what we've got in here. Taking a look in here. On this end, uh, we have hmm. oh, that's what we have. <laughs> okay, let's take another look. All right, there's our valve stem in the center. Got the little pointy thing. It's got the uh, circlip in there. And then the other end, nothing but the valve stem. So I'm going to get that circlip out, and then I'll come back and show you uh, show you what we did. Because this sometimes takes a long time to grab it and pull it out. You think it would be easy, but it's actually not, and it makes for really boring uh, boring video. So I'll be back in just a minute. We got the uh, snap ring out, or sure clip, whatever you want to call it. And I believe the uh, guts now just fall out. There's a retainer washer. So it looks like that inside the tube, and then snap ring uh, holds all that in place. Okay, well sure enough, here's the uh, valve stem, and it was in here something like that. And we just went in and pushed on the stem here and pushed it out the front. Okay, this is kind of how this, uh, this works. We're gonna, this is not the correct valve, but we're going to pretend it is and that this is soldered in here. And actually, there's nothing. This is flat on this side of the valve, and this has a... Uh, lip for this, but bear with me. This is uh, pretending that this is soldered in there, and you have your exact exhaust stem. So it fits together something like that, and when the hammer hits that, it pushes this pin and pierces the power lip. That's the first shot you take, and from then on. This chamber here is filled with CO2. So that O-ring would sit uh, equivalent of around the lip here uh, on this. And then the washer would fit on here and then snap ring. So that's what holds everything in place. And we're going to get that o-ring out a couple of different ways. We can try and pick it out with some sort of a pick like this, um, but you do risk scratching the brass uh, on the valve. So we're going to be very gentle when we try that this out. And I've only got two hands and this job takes about four uh, I put the gun in the vise here, and it's secure, it's not real tight, and I took some of this uh, stuff that you use to wrap uh, packages with, and I've got my, my um, flashlight here, and so this is a, a good hillbilly way to be able to see down in there at the same time uh, that you don't have to be 
You know, you can focus on just getting the O-ring out rather than holding it and doing a bunch of other things. Here we go with our destructive method. Okay, so you can see we made a little bit of progress. We kicked up a little bit of dust, but uh, the seal doesn't seem to want to give up. I'm going to try that a couple more times and see if we can dislodge that seal. Okay, I think we about got it. Let's go ahead and there's the remnants of our o ring. got and it's looking pretty good um, if you look at where the valve sits right on that ring um, not the deep ring but the other ring looks pretty good and then around the edge I don't see any major gouges or anything we used a uh, 113 90 durometer uh, black o-ring and I didn't show it and I'm not going to pull it out and redo it uh, for the camera but we got it started and then used this tool to push it in. And the first thing we got to do is drop this down in and I think this is mainly just uh, trial and error. Oh, it went right in. Okay, we got lucky on that one. Our second uh, next trick is to get the uh, piercing pin and spring in there. This is just a piece of steel that I, it's got a hole drilled in one end. So we'll try this one, see if this works any better. I'll be darned. We're lined up. We have the uh, washer that goes in there. And this we want to fit right on top of the point. And it didn't do it. So we're going to encourage it a little bit here. There it is. Um, everything is perfectly lined up, the piercing pin, the washer. Our last uh, thing we've got to do is put the lock washer back in. And I'm going to use this snap ring plier here to get it started and then we're going to push it in with our pushy tool until it snaps. And we should hear it snap into place. See if I can't get past the threads here. Okay. Get our pushy tool. And we're listen for it. Okay. Did you hear it snap in? Okay, let's take a look in here and see what it looks like. Going in past the threads. And there we have it. It's all cleaned up. There's our snap ring. It's in the uh, groove. And right in the center there is our piercing pin. So I think we're pretty well set here. All right, so we're looking good. And um, the next step is to test it. And to do that, we've got our powerlet. We have a little drop of secret sauce on there. It goes in. I've replaced the uh, 
o-ring on this cap here so it should be good at this end okay now we just have to pierce it there's the tool I mentioned that I used to pierce it. Goes in here and all right. We have CO2. Now we could just put it back together and start shooting it, but um, when you're using CO2, it's you know best to find a leak now before anything gets you know put back together and then you have to tear it all apart again. So we're going to go ahead and weigh this and uh, see what it weighs and if it's leaking CO2 then when we come back tomorrow it'll weigh less uh, and that's basically how you or at least one way that you test to see if you're leaking gas. So let me get the uh, scale and we'll figure out how much this weighs. Okay so we've got our scale here. This is in ounces, up to a hundredth of an ounce. Put that on there. And that weighs 37.03 ounces. So we'll record that. And then we'll come back tomorrow, see if it weighs the same. All right, if you recall yesterday, we had it at uh, 37.03 ounces. And we'll see if it lost any gas overnight here. We're at 37.03. Damn, we're good. Well, before we put this all back together, there's one thing that's, that's kind of interesting here that I thought we'd try and point out, um, and I don't know if it's on all of the uh, guns that Benjamin made that shoot lead balls, but on this one, I think the uh, 13 or uh, 3120 and maybe some others, but there's a little wire here right on the end of the bolt. I think you can see that, and it goes down there. You can kind of see it coming across. It wraps around the outside and then crosses the inside and I think that's to hold the lead ball in there from slipping out. Because if you loaded it, uh, conceivably this could just roll down the barrel I guess. Uh, especially if it's a smooth bore. And this is called, this little spring is called a uh, spring ring stop in bolt. And so if you're having trouble with feeding that the uh, lead balls won't stay put there. Uh, check and see if you've got this uh, spring ring stop in bolt. That could solve your problem. Okay, let's put it together. Okay, here we go. And the bolt goes in. There's a little slot here in the back. That the uh, stud here on the bolt goes into that slot. And the hammer also goes into that same slot with the stud. Or it should anyway. to have the safety off. Okay. Okay. You can put the trigger back in. Okay. Looks 
good so far. And lastly, we have the uh, handle for the bolt. And I got to go get a, a little spring washer to put in here. So I'll be back. I'll put that in and we'll see if it shoots. All right, let's test it. Cox, okay. And it fires. Okay, we have a complete gun. And there you have it. The uh, Benjamin 85 shot 22 carbine model 3620.